Hi everybody, welcome back to Sherry's Plant-Based Kitchen. It's the new year now, and boy, things have really taken a turn, haven't they, in this country with COVID, with the Omicron variant. Um, just about everybody I know now is sort of getting it. It's not a great time. It feels like we're sort of back uh, two years ago when all this started, but We've got to sort of stay the course and keep going and do the best we can and take care of ourselves. So that's what we're doing. Today in Chicago, we're expecting about six to eight inches of snow. So I'm staying inside and I'm cooking up a storm today. So one of the things that uh, people always ask me is, what can I make for company? You know, something that's easy and that feeds a lot of people. Well, I've got just the thing for you today. And that is a creamy sun-dried tomato and kale pasta dish. It was created by Shane Martin at shaneandsimple.com with just a little bit of a modification by me because I happen to love mushrooms. So I went ahead and I've done a couple things so that we can speed up this process, but we're gonna do this until it's all combined. So you'll watch all of the steps today. So I took one onion and you can see over here in my skillet, I cut up an onion, diced it real well, and I diced um, eight ounces of mushrooms, real thin. And then I just cooked them down. You don't have to add anything to this. The onions and the mushrooms provide you with plenty of liquid to saute. So these are done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some garlic because every good pasta dish needs garlic. Wouldn't you say, Dale? Absolutely. It's the best thing in the world. So we're gonna throw that in for about 30 seconds. And I'm just going to stir it in. And Dale, you tell me when 30 seconds are up. Okay. okay I'm not going to count, but we'll just uh, keep sauteing this a little bit. I can see he's counting to himself back there. And you just want the flavors to start to blend, so you don't have to cook the, um, the garlic too long. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. There we go. Let me see if I can smell. Oh, yeah. I can smell the flavors coming together already. 30. 30 seconds, thank you. And this is a one pot dish. You don't have to mess up a lot of different things. You don't have to cook your pasta in. So it's simple and delicious. So we've, we've done that now with our garlic. So I just wanna make sure we're not too high here. The next thing we're gonna do is we take a little bit of salt and pepper. We're gonna add it in. And we're going to add in two tablespoons of tomato paste. We get all that out. I've washed my hands. I'm just going to use my fingers because I don't want any of this to not be in the dish and just remain in this little, this little serving thing. Okay, I'm going to mix that in. I'm going to serve, keep stirring it until it gets well combined. Can you see the tomato sauce blending in there beautifully? Okay, so keep it on here, Dale, because now we're going to add something that's super delicious which is the sort of the um, cornerstone of this recipe, and that is sun-dried tomatoes. Now, sun-dried tomatoes, you know, come in shapes about this big. So what I had to do, I had to slice them into skinny little pieces, and that's four ounces of sun-dried tomatoes. Now, these are not sun-dried tomatoes that are stored in oil. They, they have nothing on them, so it's all very good and compliant with a whole food plant-based diet, so you're not getting extra fat or anything. So look at that. I'm going to stir this for about maybe a minute, I think it says. Let me just check for a minute or two. So we'll just keep stirring, and I'll keep talking to you. So Dale and I were supposed to go visit his sister's, um, in Ohio in a couple of days, and unfortunately, because of the situation with the airlines and with um, COVID, we just decided we're gonna wait. We'll probably go in the summertime when we can get in the car and drive there and visit, not them, but also our son and our grandchildren and granddaughter, our grand, uh, excuse me, our daughter-in-law <laughs> got all tongue twisted there. So we'll have to postpone that trip, but hey, that's okay. So this should be for about a minute or two. And one of the things I love to do is to smell this as it's cooking because the sun-dried tomatoes give an unbelievable flavor to this dish. Ah, it's wonderful. Okay, how are we doing? You think that's about a minute or two, Dale? Yeah, it says about right. Okay, so let's see what's next. 
Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to get ready for the pasta. I call it, this is pasta prep time. We're going to take two and a half cups of low sodium vegetable broth, and I'll pour that in. And then we're going to take two and a half cups of your favorite plant milk. Today I'm using soy milk, but you could use almond milk, that would be fine. But it should be unsweetened, don't, don't put a sweetened plant milk in there. And then I think we're just going to let this come to a boil, a slight boil. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit so we can get this to boil. And you see how simple this recipe is? I mean, the only thing that takes time is chopping an onion and, and slicing those sun-dried tomatoes and getting your garlic ready. Other than that, that's it. So the next thing we will be doing is adding pasta. Now, one of the questions that we always get as plant-based eaters is, where do you get your protein? Well, guess what, folks? You have this chickpea pasta here, you're getting 20 grams of protein. So when people ask you where do you get your protein, you just tell them about this pasta. And remember that all plant foods contain protein. So everything in this dish has protein. So nobody on a plant-based diet has ever gone protein deficient. So just keep that in mind. Let me just turn this down a little. That's getting a little hot there. So what I'm going to do when this boils, comes to a boil, is we're going to stir in one pound of this um, chickpea pasta, and it's a penne pasta. And so you need two boxes, because each one is just eight ounces. And then we're going to cover it up, and we're just going to let it cook. Now, what I do is I peek a lot. I'll take the lid off. And what I'll do is I'll stir it up a little bit and mix the liquid around because I want it all to be covered so that it can evenly cook. So it's starting to get hot. I can feel it. So we'll wait a minute here. And then I'll just tell you what we'll do after we add this. So we're going to let that cook. I think it says about 10 minutes, but I don't know. I just check it. So after 10 minutes when the pasta goes in and you've covered the lid, take the lid off, check it, and just see, you know, if there's the pasta is getting tender. You'll want to probably taste one piece of pasta after about 10 minutes. I think the last time I made this, I cooked it for 15 minutes, around 15, 16 minutes, because I like to get it a little softer. So you just have to do it to whatever taste you like. And then once that's done, you take kale. Now they say five ounces. So I took about four big leaves of kale and chopped them up really fine. And then after the pasta is cooked, and you're ready for it. You just throw the kale in and mix it in, put the lid back on and just let it steam until it cooks for about a minute or two, that's it. And then the very last step, once the kale's been in there and everything's combined, is your nutritional yeast. So you throw this in at the last minute and, and stir it all up and your dish is done. So it literally, I would say, with the cooking time and all that you do, this is done in about mm, 45 minutes from chopping to cooking. So that's not bad. And it'll feed probably six people easily. As a matter of fact, I think when we go to the shelter, um, not this month, but the month after, we're going to make this because I'll just need four volunteers to make a double batch each, and that'll feed about 40, 45 to you know, 50 people. So it's a great dish, and I think that they will love it. So let's see if we're getting ready here to add the pasta. I can feel the heat. I just want to see a little bubble come up here. Okay, come on. While that's doing, I'm going to just wash my hands. Be right back. Okay. Still, isn't it funny when you're watching a pot how it never boils? Why is that? Come on. Okay, I'm going to be real quiet. Fool it. Well, okay, it's coming out to a slight boil. I'm going to really rip it up here high for a second so we can get it boiling. I usually don't cook with these pots on high, so I won't keep them on high for long. There it goes. Okay, I see a little bubbling. So I'm going to take my pasta, two boxes. Here's my other one. I'm going to put it in. And now you do the stirring. So I'm going to cover it all up, make sure it's all in there. Look at that. 
see what a large amount you're going to get in this, this dish? And you know what? It even tastes better the second day. Wouldn't you agree, Dale? Yeah. That we don't have a problem using this for leftovers mm, all the not time. Not at all. So we'll be eating this uh, probably for dinner tonight, and then we'll have some for tomorrow, maybe lunch. Okay, so now it's boiling. And you see how I'm trying to get all the pasta in there? Because I want it to get um, evenly coated with this liquid. So I'm pushing it down, pushing it down a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to turn it really low. And now I'm going to put the lid on. Okay, so I won't keep you another um, 10 minutes while this is cooking. But remember, 10 to 15 minutes. Check this to make sure it's done, the pasta. Taste a piece. And then add in your kale. So when, it, when the pasta is done, you're going to throw the kale in, mix it in, put the lid on. You know, it takes about a minute or two for the, for the kale to steam and to incorporate into the dish. And then the last step, well, the last step before the last step is adding the nutritional yeast in, again, stirring it up. And then to give it a little bit more punch at the very end, when you put it in your serving bowl, you might sprinkle it with crushed red peppers. It gives it that extra little taste that people love gives it a little spice and a little kick. So that's it. So let's take one last look at it and see how it's doing. It's doing well. And see how pretty it is and imagine it with the beautiful kale in there as well. And there it is. So enjoy this dish everyone. And I will post the recipe under the uh, comment section so that you can see what Shane and Simple did to create this recipe. I love his uh, recipes and his, um, his blog and his website, so check out all of his recipes. And Shane, if you're watching this one, I added the mushrooms. You might want to try it yourself. I think they really are great. So have a great day, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now.